Hey everybody, come over here to this one. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Y'all probably take you a minute. I got one person in here. So, come in if you want to. I'll stay on here a few more minutes with y'all. Okay, they're coming back. We got 14 people back in here. Sorry about that, everybody. That's my good friend, Kevin. He's a expert small engine mechanic, and he's also a, marine, a fish biologist with the Department of Fisheries and just a A1 good fella. And I had him work on my weed eater. I got a Husqvarna weed eater, and the head froze up. And I thought the foot shaft was bad, and he was going to change it. But uh, turns out it was just clogged up with junk. So uh, he got her lined up for me. And he's working on a Gravely for me. If you all remember watching back a video back in the winter, I showed you my little Gravely I got. And uh, he's going to rebuild it and get it running so we can use it this year. Let's see. Fent says, wondering if you use different tomatoes, make it taste different, or should you just use the same type of tomatoes? Um, I also I use is well pretty well I use about any kind of tomatoes I got. I don't use yellow tomatoes usually, but um, you want acidic tomatoes for uh, tomato juice because uh, you want it to be able to. I don't know if it ain't acidic then uh, it'll spoil easy. But I use I grow Park Swapper, and I have some. Uh, they're called Juliet, but they're like a little cherry tomato, and uh, we've canned. We even put our. Uh, Cherokee purples and everything in there and uh, pretty well all the tomatoes we have except the yellow and uh, the big heirloom I got some big called big rainbow gets a real big and they're yellow and red striped and uh, hello Andy from An uh, Andy's Tennessee life and homestead but I use about any red tomato there is and uh, now the my ball blue book recommends you add two tablespoons of lemon juice per quart of tomato uh, yeah, per quart of tomato juice that way you're guaranteed it to be acidic enough but uh, I don't put it in mine but that don't mean you shouldn't put it in yours so Jared's not giving you the advice to not put it in your tomato juice so uh, go buy the blue book or can uh, official canon recipe from the USDA I'd say let's see hello from Greenup Kentucky Oh, that's right down the road for me, about an hour. Green up is. Okay, Jimmy, Vince, Andy, and Gary. We appreciate. Hey, there's old dog dreaming. Appreciate y'all watching. And uh, like I said, uh, sorry about that. Uh, usually, you don't get no company up here where I live. If I get company, it has to be somebody looking for me because, uh, or somebody that knows me because you can't find me any other way. But. You have that sometimes. Let's see. Colton says, Hello, neighbor. Ain't Kentucky a beautiful state? It's the prettiest state you ever did see. Prettiest state I've ever been to. And I ain't, well, I ain't been to many of them. I've been to maybe 10 or 12. I don't know. But it's the prettiest place I've ever been. If you ain't been to Kentucky, you are to go. There's Ben from Oklahoma. Somebody from, let's see, Billy from North Carolina. Lynn from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I was just down your way a couple months ago. We go to Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge about once a year at least just to ride around and enjoy the sights. I like going to that uh, Tennessee Knife Works and the Bass Pro Shop and all that good stuff. There's a Narrow Wave Farms from Kansas. Pamela's from Austin, Texas. There's somebody else from Oklahoma. Oh, uh, I got something else here I was going to show you. Now that there's more of you back in here. I've talked to y'all time after time again about the uh, greasy beans. And uh, I'm going to show you. The other day I picked, I don't know, maybe half a bushel, three quarters of a bushel of greasy beans again. And uh, I've been saving seeds more than anything now. So I was going to show you my latest greasy bean seeds collection. This here is a, I don't know how big this dish pan is. Might be 
18 inches. But uh, that's all my greasy bean seeds so far. I saved out of that batch. And uh, they're pretty deep. I need to actually lay them on a cloth out. They're white. But uh, they turn brown and striped, you know, once they dry. But there's going to be a bunch of them. And uh, I'm going to have to pick one more time, probably. And I'm letting all the rest of them go to seed uh, this time of year. But you can't see behind me. My little bean patch is right here. And uh, they're just drying up to almost nothing now. And uh, now everything that's left has got a lot of bug bites and little brown spots and stuff on them. So uh, the rest of them I'm going to let dry on the vine to seed. Uh, Gary says, asked me about selling the greasy bean seed. Um, I'll have some. Oh, I started an Etsy store. And uh, I ain't posted nothing for sale yet on there. But uh, if you got anything you'd like to see on there, uh, let me know. I'm going to try to make a few little things. And uh, I've had some people ask me about making stuff where I do uh, handyman stuff. But these seeds be on there. And I might put some rattlesnake beans. They're a little easier to get, though, than these. These are the hard ones to get. But uh, I'll have these for sale, I don't know, next few months on there. I'm not sure how much there'll be, but there'll probably be a pack of 30. 30 seeds is enough to, I mean, that's a good, 30 seeds is a pretty good handful, and that's enough to get you started, get you enough to, if you take care of 30 seeds, you can have a, a pretty good mess of beans. Let's see, Mike and Honey Homestead, or Milk and Honey Homestead, I'm sorry, said, do you grow any tobacco this year? Uh, no, I didn't grow any this year. Um, I didn't take the time to get the seeds, and I didn't, uh, go out and ask anybody about any plants so I didn't grow any this year and uh, maybe next year I'll get a good variety that does good and uh, we'll try it again we'll have the barn done by next year and I'll have a better place to hang it this little shed you can kind of see the roof back here it stayed too moist to dry and uh, it did mostly mildew the only ones that was uh, any count I hung in my little workshop and uh, they dried pretty good but there just wasn't enough of them I didn't hang enough in there Let's see, One, somebody, I can't read the name from here, said, uh, Hello from Michigan, have you ever made leather britches, dried beans? Oh yes, we make them every year. I ain't made none this year, but uh, I've got a fall crop of beans will be coming in another month, and I'll be drying some of them, but we call them shuck beans here, or um, shucky beans, people call them, but they're leather britches. I put them in a de, excuse me, I put them in a dehydrator, and uh, let them dry for about a day, day and a half, depends. Till they're, I mean, not crispy, crunchy, but till they're dry. Let's see. Any additional videos you've been thinking about making? Oh, I'm a seed dummy. Any additional videos? How to videos you've been thinking about making? Um. I'm getting ready to put up a how-to video on my braided onions. That'll be out probably this, today's Monday. I try to put my videos on either a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. But uh, sometimes I get busy and I can't get them out real fast. But I'll have, uh, I'll have the onion video out this week for sure. And then there'll be some other videos soon. And then uh, if you all have any ideas that you want to see in a video on how to do something or anything just let me know and if i do it or can do it i'll try to make a video for you uh, somebody says how do you cook the shucky beans okay what we do i get out a handful say that's how many you want to cook and you don't put out as many of them as you would like just uh if you opened a, a quart jar of beans then i put them in a pan and a bowl of water and let them soak for a while you can let them soak overnight even whatever you want and uh then once you let them soak, we get them out and we put them in a cooker with a big hunk of fat, uh, pork fat or bacon or bacon grease or you can use lard or whatever you want to taste. A big hunk of ham or ham bone works really good. Uh, salt pork and then we uh, just cook them till they're pretty tender. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how long we cook them. I have to ask Lakin on that. She's the expert cook. But we just cook them till they're tender and then we fly in eating them. Let's see, somebody asked me about Miss it. Uh, asked me if I deer hunt. Do you hunt deer in Kentucky? Yeah, usually I hunt deer. And uh, I don't always, I don't deer hunt as much as I like to turkey hunt. But I do deer hunt a little bit, and I've killed several. 
But deer hunting is a really big thing here in East Kentucky. I mean, about everybody. If you don't deer hunt, then you ain't a member of Eastern Kentucky pretty well. Let's see, somebody asked me when is the best time to plant turnips. Well, I don't know where you live at and what your zone, how your zone works, but where I'm at, I usually start planting uh, my turnips, mustard, and kale towards the end of August when it's still warm. But uh, or you can plant them in September, I think. But you got to give them time to get started before it starts getting cold. Let's see, what else we got on here? Somebody want something? Ten Liz, she says show all. Uh, she's an animal lover and wants me to show all the animals. Especially the big orange cat. He's not out here with me today. I don't know where he went to, but uh, I'll, to, I'll uh, do another animal video here soon. Let's see. Mary says, how many times do you add water to garden green beans? I've never cooked fresh garden green beans. Um, what we do when we cook a gr fresh green bean, you know, we put them in a pot and we put some kind of pork in there. Like the same with the shuck beans, salt pork, bacon, bacon grease, or whatever. And then uh, we just we put our beans in. And we just put a little water in the bottom. We don't we don't fill the whole pot full of water. We put a, you know, I don't know, inch and inch of water, inch and a half of water in the bottom, and that just kind of gets that steam coming up through them real good and cooking them. And then I don't you don't stir them real hard. We take and just kind of fork them around a little bit. And then if they start boiling down, then you add a little water to them. But, I mean, you don't add a whole big lot of water to them. But you shouldn't have to add much. Just every now and then, if it starts getting real low, you don't want them to scorch. Well, you add some water. Hope that helps you. I ain't the expert cook. We need Lakin out here for that. Let's see. Somebody asked if uh, they make their beans in a pressure cooker. Yeah, you can use a pressure cooker. Well, we usually don't use a pressure cooker, but you can if you're in a hurry. And, uh... I'm not sure how much water you add in a pressure cooker on it, but uh, I'd say you can find in a cannon book or in a, your pressure cooker book or online recipe. I tell you. Let's see. Somebody says, uh, "What was the hardest part of reassembling your home?" Oh, I'd say the hardest part was uh, well, the hardest part was getting the logs over here because uh, I didn't have no big tractor trailer or nothing and. If you've seen the hill I live on, you couldn't get one up here no way. But uh, we had to get them up here and stack them, and I had to rent a forklift, and it took about five of us to... I drove the forklift, and we had ropes going off the logs, and we had to raise it up. But uh, that was probably one of the hardest parts, was everybody staying in sync and uh, stacking the logs and trying to get them level and all that stuff. And now uh, the hardest part on a log cabin, I think, is the chinking. If you chink a whole log cabin, you should get some kind of award or medal, because now it is hard work. And I'm still chinking on mine. It's not done to this day. And uh, that's one of my next projects here soon, is uh, finishing my chinking. Let's see here. Hello from Michigan. Have you ever done a batch of corn on the cob jelly? I know I ain't never heard of that, I don't believe. And uh, somebody, somebody asked me if I cure and smoke my own bacon. Um, now I have cured and smoked my own bacon. Um, I done a batch here a few years ago in a smokehouse. But uh, lately when we kill a pig, we, uh, we kill it here and take out any parts that we want to keep for ourselves. And then anything we want uh, cured, we've been taken to some Mennonites that has a, a slaughterhouse. And uh, they do a really good job of curing it. And... Uh, they vacuum pack it and uh, we don't have to they don't have to kill it but we take them like our ham or our bacon and uh, that's worked really good and uh, right now I don't have the best smokehouse set up to do it myself I, but hopefully when I get my cellar done we're gonna build us a little cannon room above it on the second floor and I'm gonna try to make me a little place that's better equipped let's see little feet farm homesteads Oh, yeah, they're from Somerset. And I've got an aunt that lives around Somerset there somewhere. Let's see. Somebody asked me, Mary said, Is the ceiling of your porch painted or stained? Um, let's see. This ceiling right here, this ain't nothing. There's nothing here but uh, two befores and ten. You can see the purlins across, and they're just aged wood. I ain't stained them, painted them, or nothing. Um, the posts, all these posts and our floor of the porch is painted. 
Um, it's called Stone Statue. This is the color of it from Lowe's. I think it's a Sherwin Williams color, but I didn't buy the Sherwin Williams paint. And um, we're going to be doing a video soon. Um, somebody has been asking, a lot of people ask about the cabin and everything we do to it. But you can see here, we've stained the addition in the corners here. And we're going to try to do a video that tells exactly what color we use, the type of paint we use, how we put it on. Because I've had a lot of people ask me about that stuff. So I don't remember the exact, this is like a dark slate. It's a, it's like a semi-transparent stain. But uh, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to do a video kind of explaining all the colors on that. Because I've had people ask. Let's see. Somebody says, what is the nearest city to your home? Um, which I don't, I can't tell you exactly the closest, maybe the closest city to me, but I'm pretty close to Louisa, Kentucky. Let's see. How are you doing with your barn? That's a good question. And I, I was hoping to have the barn over here by now, but uh, right now, where the barn is sitting, I ain't done a video where it's at yet. But the barn, to get to it, you got to go across this little creek. And uh, it's so swampy in there. We had so much rain this summer. You couldn't whoop a cat through that swamp. So uh, I've got to take a tractor over there and try to drain the swamp enough to get my truck and trailer through there to take the barn down. So hopefully, that, it may have to be this fall when you get another good dry spell and I can get that done. Um, and there's a lot of snakes in that country over there. So... Uh, I've been debating on maybe wait until the after the first frost or two, and then moving the barn. I'm not sure yet. So let's see what kind of insulation in between the logs. You regular fiberglass insulation. Buy it in the roll just like you would for the walls, and I peel the paper off of it. Or you can buy it without the paper, and I put that in between before I put my uh, nails and such in for chinking. Uh, Jamie asked that I make the rocking chairs behind me on the porch. I know all these chairs over here is in a I got all these out of a barn that uh, I had of another log barn that I'm supposed to move to and uh, It was given to me and all these chairs was in it and we just kind of cleaned them up. And I painted a few of them Let's see here Lynn says, we are building a screen porch right now. Is yours metal screening or plastic? Uh, mine is the plastic screening, which is like a fiberglass. I don't know if it's fiberglass or what, but it's the fiber screen. And um, I, I don't know. I've never used a metal screen enough to know which one I'd recommend to you. Now, mine did. Uh, mine was kind of hard to get tight. And, uh, and I have a few waves in mine, but it don't hurt. It still looks good. And it does a good job. But uh, the metal might be better. I'm not sure. But mine was very cost effective. I've done my whole porch for like a hundred dollars, so you can't beat that. Um, let's see, the bearded carpenter. Howdy, buddy. If you ain't checked out the bearded carpenter, he's got a good project going on, moving his log smokehouse. Says I agree about the chink, and I mixed 106 batches on. Chisholm House Restoration gets old very uh, gets old quick. It gets old very quick. I hate chinking with a passion, and uh, I don't know. I kind of hate mixing it more than putting it in. Once you get going, it ain't as bad. But getting it all mixed up, and then by the time you get going, uh, it starts getting thick. And I don't know. It's it's about like working with con any kind of concrete. It's a pain. So uh, that's why my cabin is not chinked all the way today. It's just because it is torture to do. But it's got to be done, so I'll be doing that here in the next few weeks. I think I got one more thing. Uh, I ain't going to stay on here real late tonight. But I got one more thing I was going to show you. Um, this is uh, one of the handiest tools I ever used. And uh, I had some people comment asking me about my pocket knife. And uh, I know this is a very popular topic with a lot of people. But this is the best pocket knife I ever carried. And uh, for me especially, I do carpentry work, and you, this is the best knife I, I've ever used. And this is a, a Case XX brand, but it looks like a regular trapper. If you know knives, you know what a trapper is. But this is a equestrian knife. See, it's got the hoof pick on it, but 
you don't have to be an a horseman to use this knife. But this is the handiest tool you ever had for getting in little places, pulling on stuff, or holding stuff, or to scrape stuff, or to dig something out. And uh, this is the best knife I've ever used around the farm and carpentry work. And I highly, highly recommend it. And no, I don't get paid nothing for promoting. I don't care what brand it is. I like every brand of knife. I've got hundreds of knives. But this is the handiest knife that I ever carried. So I had some people ask me about a pocket knife. So maybe that'll answer your question. Let's see. DC con or D Construction says, What species are the logs on your house and have I stained them? Um, I have mostly poplar and there's a yellow pine and a hemlock. And I believe there's a, on the far side with my front porch side, it's either there's an ash, I think there's an ash log. And maybe a hickory log. It's kind of had a few mixed up in on the front, but most, for the most part, it's poplar and pine and a few hemlock. And uh, mostly poplar, I'd say, so most of them. And uh, I have not stained them. All I did when I put it up, I lightly pressure washed it. And uh, I didn't pressure wash it too hard because it'll fuzz up the wood, you know, and make it look awful. But uh, I pressure washed it. And then now this summer, I've got a, get, a big bucket of uh, Thompson's water seal that I'm going to spray the whole cabin down with a uh, water seal. Y'all have a good evening, little uh, feet farm homestead. And uh, if you got any more questions, I'll, got, I'll stay on here three more minutes. Let's see. Somebody says here, was it hard to find a log home to move? Um, now, I got lucky and found mine. Mine was only about 10, 15 minutes down the road, and I inquired about it once, and it was sold to another man and from, uh, I think, Ohio that uh, has a, move, a log house company. And then I got lucky, and the man backed out, and uh, I bought it. But there's a lot of cabins around here, but most of them people either still live in and they're covered up with siding, or they won't even talk about selling them. Debbie from Louisville, Kentucky. Hello, Debbie. I'll be in Louisville the end of this month at a, a seminar I have to go to for my, where I'm a magistrate. Where's somebody from Mississippi? Okay. Anybody got any last question there before I go? I've enjoyed talking with y'all and uh, appreciate y'all watching and uh, appreciate y'all watching all our videos. Frida says, hey, from Ohio, and she uses the KitchenAid for everything and thinks we'll, we will like it. I think we will, too. It has to be better than the way I've been doing this tomato juice. Jeff wants to know how much property costs in our area. Um, just depends what you get. Um, I've seen most of it's hillside, but I've seen it from a couple hundred dollars an acre to a thousand dollars an acre. Just depends uh, if it's got any flat land or it's got good timber on it. But there's uh, quite a bit of land for sale around here. Jimmy says a three minute banjo tune. We'll play you one more while uh, y'all say your good nights and your goodbyes and all that. And uh, we'll try to do it again next Monday night, the Lord's will. Alrighty, I'm going to pick you a tune while everybody, uh, while I get ready to go. And uh, appreciate y'all, love y'all. And uh, really appreciate you watching the channel. I never dreamed this channel would do as good as it does. And I uh, just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Hope y'all have a very blessed week. And uh, hope you have a good church you can go to on Sunday. And we love y'all from Flutie Lake Homestead. <laughs>